All right, this video is gonna be part one of your final exam review. So first of all, what you see in front of you is the reference sheet you're gonna get. So you'll get your, your full unit circle, you'll get your law of cosines, and you'll get your summation equations. There's a couple more that are actually built into the test. Um, we'll address those when we get to those, but for the reference sheet, this is what you'll get. The test itself is uh, 47 questions total. There are 33 multiple choice and there are 14 open-ended, which is where your graphing is going to be. And then the systems of equations and stuff like that. Each of the questions are two points apiece, except for there are two, three variable systems. One using Gaussian elimination with back substitution or Gauss Jordan, you get to choose. Um, and the other using the Kramer's rule. So those will be worth double questions. You can choose to either use a scientific calculator the entire time or you can use a graphing but only for the first 10 questions and then you would have to give um put your calculator on the ground and not have it for the remaining time so scientific is definitely your best option this video is going to cover just one chapter this we're going to start with chapter six so this goes through each of the chapter reviews from your textbook and i kind of just like scaled back on what wouldn't be covered on your test so in chapter six which is where we started in January. This is where this packet starts. Um, we started with law of sines and the law of cosines. So the law of sines is one of the equations that you're not given. This hopefully is one of those easy ones to remember. This is your A over sine of A equals B over sine of B or C over sine of C. And you can do any two of those at a time and then cross multiply divide. So you're going to get questions in which you will get given two angles and and the side, um, two angles and the side, right? Like just like those. You do not have to worry about the ambiguous case. So the angle side side, you don't have to worry about those because there won't be the second triangle. Then we got into area of a triangle, an oblique triangle. This is another formula that you need to know that's not given to you. So note that highlighted in pink is what you need to know, and in blue is what you will be given. We got to area and then some word problems, either dealing with law of sines or cosines. And then we got into law of cosines. So the law of cosines are what will be given to you on that reference sheet. That would be like something like 17, which we'll use for side, 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 or 23 side, angle, side. Again, some word problems there with law of cosines. Then we got into Heron's area, area formula. This is one that you need to know. Um, a plus B plus C. Actually, that's a lie. Sorry. This is one that's given to you. It will be given to you in the instructions on the question. S is A plus B plus C over 2. And the area is the square root of S times S minus A times S minus B times S minus C. So these questions you will definitely have a calculator for. Whether it's graphing or scientific, you'll have it for all of that. 6-3, we got into vectors. and We talked about component form. So this is your X2 minus X1 comma Y2 minus Y1 where your initial is your ones and your terminal is your twos and you leave it in component form. And then the magnitude is the absolute value, or sorry, the square root of x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Or if you already have the component form, it's the square root of a squared plus b squared. Then you get into finding the sum of vectors. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay, then we're, then we're adding, adding subtracting scalar multiple, multiple on, on vectors in both, both component form and the IJ, IJ format. format. Then, then you're, you're finding, finding uh, the vector, uh, vector in, the in the same direction. direction. So, so this, you put, put the component, component form, form over the magnitude. The magnitude. That, that is, is again, again highlighted in pink, which means we need to know that one. The dot, the dot product comes, comes up, up, so if it asks you to find the dot, dot product of two, two vectors, vectors, we multiply the first term, term in each, and then, and then add it to the second term. term. So, so if this, this is u1, comma, u2, and then v1, comma, v2, then we find the dot product by multiplying these two, u1 times v1, and then add it to the multiplication of these two, u2 plus v2. And it and will it be, be an, an individual, individual number. number. That product, product is just, just one, one number. number. Okay. 
Okay, okay that's, that's more dark product. product. Okay, okay angle, angle between, between two vectors. vectors. This, this will be given, given to you. This, this is, is one, one that requires the calculator. calculator. So, it's so it's the dot, dot product, product of the two, two vectors, vectors over the product of the magnitudes. magnitudes. And, then and then we, we second, second cosine that whole thing to get the angle in between. That would be both 69 and 70. Okay, okay, under, under 47, 47, I want I you want to add, add if the magnitude, the magnitude same, same set of directions, directions but, but if the magnitude, the magnitude let's say, say, is 5, five at, the at the end. end. So, so the, the way, way that, that it is for 47, 47 you're finding your, your unit, unit vector. vector. And unit, unit vector, vector means that it's, that it's a vector, vector in the same, same direction, direction, but it has a magnitude of 1. If it said it has a magnitude of 5, then you're going to do what you do for 47, but then you're going to multiply it by 5 at the end. And that will, is what will be covered from Chapter 6. So the next video will go over Chapter 7. So law, I mean, law of 7. Chapter 7 is your systems of equations. So you're going to get questions that are straight up systems of equations. You could get word problems, or if you remember these things like our supply and demand questions, you could see stuff like that. You, could, you will get systems of equations with three variables in two ways. One is um, seven had your partial fraction decomposition. So you remember these where you have to break your um, equations apart and put them over the factors of your denominator. And then find out what the bottom's missing, multiply it in the top, find out what the bottom's missing, multiply it in the top, and add them together. So all of that was in 7-4. That comes from that top chapter here. One is the Gaussian elimination with back substitution. So this is where you're looking for your diagonal of ones with the zeros below. And then you would do back substitution to work backwards to get your answer. So that's one of the ones that will be full out, and that's worth a double question, which is four points. The other is to use um, Kramer's rule, which is on. Um, under operations with matrices came your addition, your subtraction, your multiplication, and your page. terminants and your inverse. So all of this came from chapter seven. Remember, inverse was one over the determinant. And then we switch the A and the D and we negate the B and the C. And then you multiply it in. Our determinant is our like little Jesus fish. How do we do the determinant of a three by three? This is where you add the other columns, right? So like negative two, negative six, five, four, zero, three. And then you got to go down this way. And then you got to go back that way. So this is part of the Kramer's rule process. But you could also get a question that's just the three by three part of it. And then you use that to do the area. You use that for to test for collinear. And then it comes back again for Kramer's rule. This question is your other one that's worth double the points. So Kramer's rule, you remember you find D doing the X's, the Y's, and the Z's. You find D of X doing the constants, the Y's, and the Z's. You find D of Y, X's, constants, Z's, and you find D of Z doing the X's, the Y's, and the constants. And then to get your x value, you put d of x over d. To get your y value, you put d of y over d. And to get your z value, you put d of z over d. This is one of those questions that you'll have to show your work in order to get the credit for that question. Like a systems of equation, I don't care the other ones. I don't care how you do it if you choose to use elimination or substitution, whatever it is. But those specific questions with those specific set of instructions, you will only receive credit for that question unless or if you have the work to back it. Okay. Okay. Questions on chapter seven. So a lot of matrices, systems of equation. That was chapter seven. All right. Chapter eight started with your sequence and series. So this had arithmetic and geometric series um, and sequences. This is where factorials came into play, right? What is what does it mean if it says eighteen factorial? You keep multiplying down, so 18 times 17. If it's something like this, then the goal is to take the bigger one, break it down until you get the smaller one, and simplify from here. Um, when you get to this, like, look at the sigma notation here. 
actually not that one. The ones that are adding and subtracting that came later. You can also use your summation because I'm going to give you those formulas. So the ones that we did in chapter 11, you can apply a lot of those different places. When you get to eight, th eight, two, eight, two was arithmetic. What is an arithmetic sequence? What does that mean? You're adding or subtracting the same thing. All right, arithmetic is adding or subtracting the same value, and the formula for arithmetic is A1 plus D times N minus 1. When you get into this section, they also did partial sum. So the sum of an arithmetic was N over 2 times first plus last. These are all things that are not on a reference sheet. These are all things that you would need to know. But, like, look at number 39. This is an arithmetic sequence, so you can use n over 2 times first plus last on this, but you can also now use your other summation rules. So if you do what we just did in 11.5, what would you do with that? Split it up. Split it up. So I'd make it 2j minus 3, and then what? Bring the 2 to the front. So it'd be 2 summation j minus the summation of e. I mean of 3, sorry. And then you'll have that formula, which is the n times n plus 1 over 2, and you can do it that way. So if there's a sum or a difference or something's being raised to a power, you can split them now using those power rules. You can go back to the old way, which is the n over 2 times first plus last, but you can also use the, that way. All right, then came geometric. What is a geometric sequence? You're multiplying by the same thing every time. And the formulas that we went over in the geometric section are a n is times is a one times r to the n minus one. That's how you would find any term in that sequence. And then the sum of a finite was a one times one minus r to the n over one minus r. And the sum of an infinite is a one over one minus r. Again, none of those are given to you on a reference sheet. Those are all things that you would need to know. Okay, then we went to 8.4, and 8.4 was your binomial coefficients, okay? Your CNR, which is N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. No, sorry, C doesn't have that one. It's this. Um, and you did your binomial expansion. So this is where you want to know Pascal's triangle. And then 8, 5 started your probability. So you needed to know PNR. You needed to know uh, permutations would be like a factorial. You need to know the difference between a permutation and a combination. Remember, permutation, the order matters. Combination, it does not. And you need to know the difference between your and and your or statements. So if it said you are pulling decks of, uh, card out of a deck of cards, what's the probability you are getting a red or a jack, let's say? Then if it's an or statement, you have to ask yourself, is it mutually ex exclusive or not? Mutually exclusive means it can't be both things. So if I said a red card or a jack, could that be both things? Are there red jacks? Yes. So that would be not mutually exclusive. If I said a heart and a club, can it be both things? No, a heart and a club, those couldn't be the same thing. That would be mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive, you do the probability of the first thing plus the probability of the second thing. If it's not mutually exclusive, then it's the probability of the first thing plus the probability of the second thing minus the probability of the overlap. Then you've got an and statement, and an and statement would say something like you're pulling two cards out of a deck. What's the probability of getting a heart and a club? And for these, we need to know if they are independent 
or dependent. Independent means one does not affect the other. So if I pull a card out of the deck and I replace it, that's independent. If I pull a card out of the deck and keep it, that's dependent. If it's independent, then we do the probability of the first thing times the probability of the second thing. One does not affect the other. But you do assume that the first thing has happened. So the probability of a dependent thing would be the probability of the first thing times the probability of the second thing, given the first has already happened. God bless you. So if I wanted a red card and a club, the probability of pulling the red card, if I keep it, now affects the fact that I want the club next. All right, and that's chapter eight, uh, all the probability stuff. Questions on any of that?